I would like to welcome Bruce, yeah. our fleet manager emeritus. Bruce is uh, he's a former fleet manager for Oregon, and uh, he's been uh, a key player in some of these national level uh, studies and, and uh, EMTSP and, and NCHRP related things that uh, help and benefit our organization. So, Okay, so anyway, as Chris was saying, my name's uh, Bruce Erickson, the retired ODOT Fleet Services Manager. I was also on the EMTSP oversight panel and a uh, member of the TRB HD60 Equipment Committee for probably six years, I think. So um, anyway, this picture is of Carl Smith Beach in Hilo, Hawaii, and I don't know if that's Tom Cruise there or not, but kind of, or not Tom Cruise, but uh, Tom Hanks from Survivor. With, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is an area where the turtles come in, and so it's a white sandy beach bottom. It's about five feet deep, and all the tourists love to come here and, and snorkel with the tur turtles. Even in retirement, there's still important work that has to be done. So this is my favorite um, place. It's, this is the head of Hilo Bay, and this is called Hele Inu. So it's an open-air bar you go, and it overlooks the bay, and there's a boat ramp across the street, and park, and people fish. And the... So as a subject matter expert, even after retirement, uh, I remain involved in the NCHRP project. So everybody knows what the NCHRP is. It's a National Cooperative Highway Research Program. So projects 1306, 1307, and 1308. And on the agenda, there's also a reference to 1304, 1305, and another striping or warning light, I'm sorry, warning light project. And so Lisa and Greg are gonna jump in on those. So I'm gonna briefly touch on four, and then, but I'll, I'll give you a little bit more information on what's happening on six, seven, and eight, and then I'll turn the, the control over to Greg and Lisa. So uh, 1306, it's called the formulation of long range plans for replacement needs and budget of highway operations equipment. So just a schematic of what good long range planning might look like. So uh, this research is thought to be a tag on to project 1304, and uh, which was created, which has created an electronic tool and guide to assist agencies with optimal replacement cycles. And 1304 was released in I believe it was 16 and 17. I believe it was at the national meeting um, where um, Dime Management Group, who was the consultant on board, who had um, rolled it out there or gave us a briefing. And then in San Diego in 2017, we had a full presentation. Is that, Lisa, does that sound right? The, well, Dime came to San Diego and gave a presentation, but then um, they also did that at the national. Does everybody understand that? It's a guide and an algorithm, basically, to, for um, optimal replacement cycles. So if you haven't, is, have, have any DOTs implemented any form of this? I hear that Arkansas, Arkansas might be. So if you get a chance, I, I believe that this presentation will be um, uh, videotaped and posted on the EMTSP website before too long. So this is the YouTube video right here um, from, I believe it was the San Diego Washima. So there is about a 30 minute uh, video on the rollout. I won't play it here today, we don't have time, but uh, you don't need to write down the, the link, but you'll be able to get to it uh, from the presentation. Um, Arkansas, I believe, is working towards it, and I know Oregon had played with some of it, um, and what uh, my analysts or my um, systems administrator had told me that it really doesn't do well to compare a motor grader to a 10-yard plow truck but it did do pretty well on identifying which of your 10 yard trucks are, should be replaced. We are looking at uh, try, trying to roll it in with our uh, chief data office. We're looking to uh, get that incorporated in some other projects they're working on that may, uh, since, since Dai pretty much told us, hey, this is free form, you can play dry steel and use this as you see fit. So they're gonna see if they can fit that into some other projects they're working on to, to make us uh, a system that would be a little bit easier to, to work with than uh, what's, what's out there right now. Okay. I do know that the guide is downloadable and I believe you might be able to get that from the NCHRP website, but the algorithm or the program is on a disc and so you, there might be a link there where you can uh, order a disc if you don't have one. The State University of New York Stony Brook University was selected as the research team for 1306 and this is the, okay, so we're gonna jump away from the optimal replacement cycle. The Tagon project to that is long range planning and it's also supposed to create an electronic guide and tool and they're supposed to talk to each other. 
So now you won't only be able to identify optimal replacement time, but it will also give you up to a 20-year span of when the optimal replacement, so which of your units you want to be able to replace and in, in which year. The research team was selected in the spring of 2018. The research team has completed tasks one through five. So if, any, if you've ever been on one of the research projects, there's two phases. There's basically the administrative research synthesis process in the beginning. And then once they receive approval that the background data has been <coughs> gathered correctly, then they get a nod to move on to phase two. And that's really the building part of the research or the actual research itself. The project panel was scheduled to meet in early September. I believe it was September 6th to review the process uh, the progress of phase one before we gave the nod to move on to phase two and the project is supposed to be completed in the fall of 2020. But hold that thought. Um, like a lot of these projects there's glitches. They, I, I don't, haven't been on one that has been just smooth all the way from start to finish. There's always got to be a contract glitch or there's got to be some issue with selection or something. So in this case um, right before I left, um, I received notification from the, uh, N uh, the NCHRP, the principal investigator. Um, she's transferring to the Univers University of North Carolina and is requesting a contract termination. And so I believe that is what is taking place at this point in time is the NCHRP has stepped back. They're going to rewrite the contract and the RFP and re-release it under a 1306 and so basically they'll eliminate phase one they'll provide that data saying here's phase one data to support phase two and they'll release a contract to a new contractor for phase two so more on that project so there's going to be some delays 1307 um, it's a guide to calculating ownership and operating costs of department of transportation vehicle and equipment fleet so the research project this research 1307 so that's the guide to calculating ownership. Um, that project was awarded to the Cadmus Group in late 2017. Um, this project is to develop a written guide and PowerPoint presentation to assist agencies in the calculation of ownership and operating costs for vehicles and equipment. And the research team is scheduled to provide the final documents to the NCHRP in late summer. So basically, I believe they may have been received by the NCHRP, so there's going to be a review of process and then uh, final documents, and it'll probably be posted, I'm guessing, late this year or early next year. We'll find it'll be open for uh, distribution. Okay, 1308, this is guidelines for decision making for repairs versus replacement of highway maintenance equipment. Um, the NCHRP determined in 2018 that the research materials from 1307 were very valuable developing 1308. 1308 was delayed release until um, 1307 information was available. And because of the connection to 1307, uh, the NCHRP has, has asked the existing project panel to remain in lead 1308. Uh, I believe what is taking place right now with 1308 is that RFP development is planned for late summer, early fall. And I'm not sure that the panel is going to need to get together. It might be done mm -hmm. via um, just um, web conferencing to be able to develop the RFP and get a contract released. I am, I'm chair, um, Tim, Tim Cunningham, um, Andrew Lemmer is the NCHRP representative, Michael Meyer from Caltrans. So I've got three, three panels, three projects. Okay, so um, any questions on those three projects? Say, so if you get a chance, if you can, just YouTube um, NCHRP 13-04 and you can um, you'll pull up that video and you can see what um, the basic framework of what that um, guide and tool does and see if it might be a benefit to any of your DOTs. On 1307 on the cost of services that one you said is would be released um, early next year so can you give us any of your thoughts on did this meet our expectations um, on 1307. My personal opinion is that um, this was probably one of the more smooth projects that I've been on. The research agency um, was very timely and um, the last time I saw there wasn't a whole lot of comments on the final draft. So 
I know I, I can't be too, yeah. you know, can't get into the weeds a lot of this stuff until it's published by the NCHRP, but yeah, yeah I, think, I think the project panel is pretty happy. Greg, Lisa, you guys are gonna cover 1305 and? 1305 is the um, guide to optimal utilization measurement and management. It's basically the project for determining and being able to set like what your utilization um, target should be. Uh, I'll be circumspect as well because the project is not been released and published, but it went in a different direction, I think, than we were expecting. And Dennis is on the panel on this one as well. So I'll hold out like final judgment until it's released. We gave them some very critical feedback um, to go back and correct. Uh, or to make some changes, and we'll see what happens. Now, Lisa, that's the same principal investigator that was on 1306, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, so is, do you know, is there going to be a hiccup even further because she's moving from Stony Brook to... So Lisa's more optimistic than I am. <laughs> so we think, in my personal opinion, it's not going anywhere. Um, we met as a group again, and, and um, they weren't uh, really providing what we had initially thought they were going to. They were struggling. They came up with a product, but it was nothing like what we thought it was going to be. So we met again and said, fix all this stuff. And so that's been probably, yeah, has it been that long? Wow. So I'm not sure where this one's going to be. Um, so was phase one ever accepted and paid for? before it moved on to phase two, or are you still stuck in phase one? So honestly, I don't know where it is, um, unless you can add anything, Dennis. No, I cannot. Uh, I spoke with the project chair, it had to be in uh, June in uh, the ASHTO meeting, and he, he was very um, circumspect and did not want to get into it. So I think with the previous statements, pretty well roll it up. Uh, that this project is long overdue uh, for completion by about 24 months. It did take off in a different direction than what we had initially thought when we signed off on phase one, and uh, it's been quiet since then. So if there's any other questions on 1305, we'll move on to GO5-24. So 0524 is vehicle and equipment. Uh, it's the new lighting standard they're working on. So it was awarded to Texas A&M. Uh, we've, we had um, similar to kind of lessons learned on the utilization one. Um, they had sent out their initial draft and the group didn't feel that it was um, the direction that we thought we wanted to go. So we met with them again and, and regrouped and, and um, I think we're going in the right direction. So I think they're on track, but we're probably still a year away from completion. So again, it's it's an update to the the lighting standard that came out, I think, in 2007. I don't recall the number, 0507 or something like that. All right, well, it looks like our fearless leader is out of the room, so I'm going to digress just a little bit here and kill some time. So for those that are new, um, how this research is um, identified and then funded. So as Lisa was saying in her presentation yesterday that the EMT, EMTSP was formed and acknowledged by AASHTO, I believe it was in 2009. The first project that was um, successful is a research roadmap, and I don't know what research number it is right now, but it was a synthesis project, so it's called a 20-7. I'm throwing a lot of numbers out there, I apologize, but. So it was 20-7 money, and uh, it's synthesis, and I don't believe it can exceed $100,000. And a panel was formed, and we met in Irvine, California, and I believe it was in 2012. And what we did is we sat down and we identified, um, and there were some, all the fleet heavy hitters from around the nation were there. The Drew Harbison from North Carolina, Earl Potter from uh, Virginia, Dennis Holochoff from Arizona. And I was lucky enough to be um, included in that. And so I learned a whole bunch in the two days that we were in Irvine. Um, but basically what we did is we just sat down with a consultant and we identified what research was the most important to DOT's fleet managers nationwide. And we developed um, a list of all of this research. And then the very next year was the first national conference, and I believe it was in Mobile, Alabama. And under Earl Potter's direction, we, as a, 
is a large group. I believe there was like 40 DOTs and plus a few Canadian provinces that were present. And uh, we prioritized those. We prioritized them one through eight or one through 10, however many there were. And then we went back to the, um, the EMTSP, um, the meetings, the annual meetings with, at that time it was called the Standing Committee on Maintenance. And uh, there was an equipment twig that was formed and uh, we just started writing research proposals and uh, we were successful, I believe, in four research projects in the first five years. And I don't believe another twig had ever done that before. And so we were very successful. And so this is the outcome of all those. That's why they're all lined up so closely because none of the other twigs is part of the Standing Committee on Maintenance, which is now called the MAC, I believe. Okay, since I retired, they changed the name. Um, they get a research project, I don't know, I'm throwing a number out there, maybe one every couple years or something like that. But the equipment twig has just been successful time after time after time after time, so. Thank you. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.